if you're afraid of what rising interest rates and trade rules do to the economy. I mean, everyone's worried about tariffs. Come on. Some stocks are going to keep working regardless. I'm talking about secular growth stories that have very little economic sensitivity. Consider the case of Zura, Z-U-O. It's a fresh face IPO. It's one of the best performers of the class of 2018. It's up 124 percent from where it came public in April, including a 57 percent gain since the close of trading on its first day. And there's a good reason for this. Zora is a cloud-based software company that's a pure play on the subscription economy. All of those companies that are trying to sell their products as a subscription service, Zora helps them launch, manage, and grow their business. It's kind of brilliant, right? I mean, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Spotify, Costco, these are all so, show us that subscriptions are where the money is. Heck, even the automakers are trying to sell people cars as subscription services. In the old days, we called that a lease. Zora is a fabulous enabler of these subscription-based businesses. I know that for a fact because at the street, where we have a bunch of subscription services, including my travel trust, which you can follow along at actionlearnersplus.com, we use Zora to optimize that business. They do a great job. Now, the numbers here are phenomenal. When the company reported two weeks ago, it posted a 60% revenue growth. But if you really want to understand the enthusiasm here, let's take a closer look with Team Zoo. He's the founder and CEO of Zora to learn more about what the future holds for this company. Mr. Zoo, welcome to Money. Good to see you, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank Good you. Have a seat. They're the number 11 employee of Salesforce who understood so, uh, subscription and software as a service from day one. Explain to people how we're not about products anymore. We're, we're about services. Well, I mean, I think companies are, are realizing that the subscription-based business model is the business model of the future. And the reason for that is their customers. If you just think about you, think about myself. Right. Every day that passes, we have to buy less and less stuff. And we talked about that two years ago, but it's exploding. Right. We used to have Netflix, we used to have Spotify, but now we have, we're paying for exercise bikes as a subscription. Mm -hmm. We're paying for travel as a subscription. Even companies are paying for things like Tractor as a subscription. And this is what we call the subscription-based economy. Well, when we talked before, I was thinking much too small. I was thinking about, well, how someone puts in their name and whether they're able to get through the web and, and therefore enter their subscription or not. But you're talking about the end of ownership. That's right, yeah. What a concept. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, I, I think when two years ago we were talking about this, this whole subscription business model was just new. Right. And now people are just extrapolating out. I mean, there's no reason you should have to buy anything. If you're not buying DVDs, if you're not buying CDs, right. if you're not buying software, why should you have to buy houses? Why should you have to buy cars? You just want to simply take out your phone, point to a service to get the needs that you want, and, and just tap into a subscription service. And this is what we're starting to see today. There's a moment in your book that I just love, and it's, it's called Subscribe, that I'm, I, I'm urging people to buy this because it is the manifesto for this particular era. Well, you talk about the New York Times as a unicorn, that yeah. literally, if it were just to start today, we would yeah. pay so much more for it because it's an ultimate subscription business now. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You're looking at companies that are saying we have a million, two million, three million right. subscribers, and there's based in Silicon Valley, and they're getting these multi-billion dollar valuations. The New York Times was talking about getting to a million subscribers just three years ago. Now they just, they, I think they eclipsed three million subscribers, and, and it's a really powerful story. But, you know, people need to start thinking about these businesses in a very different way. Yeah, they really do. I mean, you know, you talk about WeWork. We had Adobe on earlier. I mean, these are companies that we didn't initially understand. In the book, you talk about the day that Adobe decided to go subscription. That's right. And it seemed like that it was a courageous thing, but in retrospect, it was a necessity. Well, gosh, I mean, you looked at that day, right? Revenue was down. Remember that? Earnings were down. But this is because they, 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 instead of saying, you know, we're trying to get $200 off of a single purchase, we're going to keep a customer for life. And if we can do that, we're going to be a much, much stronger company. Right, but there were companies that haven't, bit the, that haven't done it, and those are the ones that are being left behind, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's why we wrote the book. I mean, a lot of companies are saying, we see that the subscription-based business model is the future. But how do we transform? Because this implies an entirely different way of doing business. You've got to build products differently. You've got to sell differently. You've got to market differently. Now, we're starting to see it. I mean, the market just did. Today happened to be a great day to have you. I mean, Dropbox was up very big today. Netflix is up very big. People are starting to realize, wait a second. I look at deferred revenue. I look at the money. I don't look at the snapshot right now. And, and it's harder for a lot of people to understand, isn't it? Because we really haven't, many people, even managers, have not gotten their heads around what a balance sheet looks like and what an income statement looks like versus what it should look like in this new economy. We have a whole chapter around the financial model yeah, and how that. you have to see it differently. And, you know, I was at Salesforce when we went public in 2004, and for years and years, Wall Street just didn't understand it. 
But if you look at the success of the IPOs, right, whether it's Pluralsight, whether it's DocuSign, this past year, I think Wall Street is starting to embrace the subscription-based business model. And in fact, when they look at us, what they really liked about us, given our customer base and half our customers are outside the tech industry, is that an investment in us is an investment in this entire subscription economy. No, it, it, it's the pure play. It's instead of an ETF. It's, it's, right. it's, it's, think of us as an index. No, I do. I, I actually do, do that. I, I think there was also a great chapter where you talk about how the IT guys don't get it. That's a revolution, a revolutionary and kind of seditious thought. Well, the IT infrastructure for the last 30, 40 years has been all built on the product economy, right? right? When companies are saying, I got to ship units, it's all about marginal costs, it's about units, it's about scale economics. And when it's not about those things anymore, it's not about supply chain, manufacturing, inventory. It's about turning your customers into subscribers, launching services, about pricing and packaging. And so the old systems of the past, these ERP systems from Oracle, right. from SAP, they're simply not going to work anymore. And IT has to change along with the businesses. Well, I think you can change it. I mean, I think these people have to bring you in, right? I mean, in the end, they have to until they figure it out themselves, right? Well, for the last 10 years, we built a pretty unique tech piece of yeah. technology now that allows any business in any industry really launch, scale, and grow and transform into subscription. Well, you should be very proud. I mean, you really, you caught the zeitgeist, but you also caught the economics of the moment. In the book, we'll explain to a lot of people why these stocks deserve to be higher than you think are too expensive. That's Teen Zoo. He's the founder and CEO of Zora. What a remarkable company. They have money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.